When it comes to the modern day NBA, the 2020s era, defense at this point is a glorified joke. And when it comes to NBA analysts trying to pinpoint who's to blame, Gilbert Arenas had a pretty interesting theory. I, I know what they can do. Get rid of all the Europeans. <laughs> What? You just said it. <laughs> you just said it. You go to college to learn defense. Yeah. What college hey, do Europeans uh, go to? I'm with you. No, I just right? get rid they of them. They don't go to college whatsoever. Yeah. They have no athleticism. They, give some they come have over. no athleticism. They all come over. Hold on. on. <laughs> they have no athleticism, mm -hmm. right? They have no speed, no jumping ability. They are a liability on defense. There's 150 year olds in the league today. Name the top 10 defenders. No, I'm, I, I None. So stopping it right there, trying to blame European players as the one group who's responsible for all the NBA's problems, I just do not buy. I mean, look at basketball post-2015. Who's the most influential player in that period? It's, of course, Steph Curry in a three-point shot. And looking at different levels of basketball, of course, the pros, college, high school, middle school, even elementary school. Who do the kids want to be like? Steph Curry shoot 35 foot threes and hit no look shots. Let it rain! Rain dance! Let it rain! I'm not gonna say Steph Curry per se ruined the NBA, but if you're gonna pinpoint one player, one group, oh, why today's game is how it is, I think guys like Steph Curry, Dame, or James Harden, those guys more so are to blame for the league's play style in 2024. And when talking about international players, Gilbert, he says all these guys, they're slow, have no speed, no vertical, they have no game whatsoever. But here's the thing, a guy like a James Hard and Dame Willard, iso ball heavy, three point shooters, and play little or no defense. Those guys fit the mold of what Gilbert thinks a European player is. And on the flip side, when talking about the best defenders in the NBA, Gilbert says, quote, there are no Europeans in the top 10. Now, first off, let's go from a stat angle and look at the defensive metrics. Out of the top 15 players in the NBA in 2024, in defensive win shares and defensive plus minus, there are eight total players, top 15, in both those categories. Out of the eight, six of them are European players. Rudy Gobert, Nikola Jokic, Wemby, Sengun, Giannis, and Nurkic. And if you want to talk defensive eye test just watching the games, I mean, someone like Wemby Yama already, one of the best defenders in the game. You also have Gobert, Anthony Davis, and Giannis also in that category. I mean, looking at the top tier defensive players, it is pretty European heavy. And look, I don't want to crown Wemby Yama yet, he's still a rookie. We're looking at his defensive stats and the way he plays on the basketball court. You could easily argue this guy is the best defender in the game despite being European. As of right now, 1st in blocks, 13th in steals, 9th in defensive win shares, 4th in plus minus, 2nd in block percentage, and 4th in rebound percentage. And some fans might say Wiminyama's stats, yes they are great, but the Spurs team defensively they are awful. Well, a fair point. But look at Wimanyama when he's on the floor. The Spurs defensive rating is 114, which is top 5 in the league. When he's off the court, it drops by 10 points to 124, the worst rating of all time. And looking past the best defenders in basketball, at the worst defenders, a lot of these star American players don't play any defense in the slightest. I mean, you have James Harden, a Trey Young, Dame, Halliburton, Maxi, Kyrie, Bradley Beal, even a Steph Curry. Most of those guys I named are awful defenders who give little or no effort. My point being, when looking at defense today, you can't blame European players solely for American players not playing defense. Mm -hmm. oh. They took away aggression to open up the Euro League. When they first started getting here, it was too rough for them. Mm -hmm. and they, so they didn't make it. They didn't make it. 
right? Oh, so no, eventually, yeah. they softened the rules. They didn't soften the rules for the Americans. They softened the rules to open it up international. Yeah. So when they're saying the Euros is going to run the league in the next five years, why do you think that? More threes, pass and cut. This is not our league. This is not the American style. This is the Euro style. So Drive in, suck the defense in, pass the ball to the three-point line. It's a three-point shooting league because they're copying Euro style. So Gilbert in this clip made some pretty interesting points. And while his overall point I don't really agree with, there are kernels of truth. When it comes to European game, yes, back in the day, it was pace and space, take threes, and get great shots consistently. But to try to insinuate there's some smoking gun, the European players ruin the NBA, I just do not buy that. I mean, look at the 91 Nuggets. Points per game, first, way ahead of the league. Pace of play, first by a mile. Three-pointers taken, also first. And their defensive metrics, dead last, dead last, dead last. The 93 Warriors run TMC. Tim Hardaway, Chris Mullen, Mitch Richmond. Three highly skilled players who operated on the perimeter. By today's standards, that team played a quote-unquote European style. Go six years later, the 99 Suns ran many three-guard lineups with Kevin Johnson, Steve Nash, and Jason Kidd. Seven years after that, the D'Antoni Suns with Steve Nash. Run and gun, seven seconds or less, up and down, with defense being optional. I mean, looking through NBA history, there's countless teams who pushed the pace, looked for threes, and couldn't care less about playing defense. Now, here's the big difference between past eras and this era. Teams like the 91 Nuggets, 93 Warriors, late 90s Suns, even early 2000s Suns. Those teams were almost isolated incidents of high-paced teams that took tons of threes. In today's league, every team 1-30 through 30, is playing that brand of basketball. And if you want to blame a certain person, a certain group, look at the Golden State Warriors and the D'Antoni Rockets. As what Golden State did in 2016, took the league by storm. And since then, everyone has been copying that model and that blueprint. That is what the league was created off of, to have more of those guys in so they can expand the business. Mm. Make it a global, global game. So, global game. You remember pushing global game, global game. How are they going to have a global game if it's too physical and too athletic for them? So they have to figure out ways where they can exist inside of the game. Wow. Right? Create wow. more opportunities, bring in more shooters so they can survive. So these guys can become shooters. So stopping Gilbert right there, he made some solid points and some other points that were kind of iffy. Where he is correct. Is that now in 2024, what we value is shooters. That's correct, 100% true and obvious. Now, where he loses me is when European players for that being valued. What I think's happened, the Golden State Warriors, Houston Rockets, even the 2000s Suns, the way they changed basketball, they changed what we value. Back in the 90s, you had enforcers, defensive bigs. Nowadays, those are basically extinct. What you have now, stretch bigs, fives who can shoot three, and guys who have to be shooters. European players didn't change that. What changed that were teams like Golden State, Houston, and the Phoenix Suns. They have been coached and taught it at a high school level. In the U.S., like you said, there's 150 European players in the, in the league right now, so they're not getting the same... coaching and tutelage in that area that most high school coaches should, damn near all college coaches do. I can't, I, I, don't, I don't, can't think of a college coach that don't work on defense, right? right? That's part of it, right? So if you're not learning in high school and you're only doing one year or six months in college, then you're going in at 19 because you're this talented and you don't, and that's, those are the guys, if they stick around the league, you're not, to your point always, you're not working on defense in the summer, mm -hmm. right? You're working on your offensive game. So stopping it right there, Kenyon Martin, makes the best point of his entire video. When it comes to American-born players versus European players, over here, what do we value? Three-point shooting, speed, agility, vertical, athletic traits. 
Over there, what do they value? Mostly skills and fundamentals. I mean, nowadays, these slow-footed players, the methodical players, who are highly skilled, are putting up numbers we've never seen. And Hall of Fame coaches, not just Kenny and Martin myself, are saying the exact same thing. From Steve Kerr to Greg Popovich. Today's American-born players, yes, they are bigger, faster, and stronger in a lot of respects compared to European players. But in terms of skill and talent, domination, we're lacking behind. And looking at college basketball, whatever you think of it, back in the 80s, 90s, even to the 2010s, your college coach was vital for your NBA success. I mean, someone like Magic, Jordan, Shaquille O'Neal, Alonzo Mourning, those guys' college coaches had an immense impact on them as professional players. My overall point being, trying to blame European players for the league not being as great defensively, I simply do not buy that. Because again, looking at the best defenders in the NBA, the majority of them are European. And the worst defensive players, yes there are some European players bad at defense, but the majority of them are also American players. So that right there is the end of the video. As always, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.